hello everyone, Ragtop is, is live. Um, I want to say thank you everyone who joined us today and also to those who are listening to this recording. Uh, all eyes right now on our guests today. Uh, we are talking with the Joe and Brandon from Audit Wizard team. And uh, basically this week is all about AI uh, in blockchain security. Also with us, uh, our co-host, me and Blockarl. And uh, yeah, just let's start. Yeah, you can just share the screen and introduce yourself to the people. Sure, yeah. Um, thanks for having us. Uh, definitely happy to be here. Maybe we could start by just like talking about our, our backgrounds a little bit and then I can I can share Audit Wizard, the, the platform we've been working on. We can talk about it a bit. Um, so I'm Joe, um, co-founder of uh, Audit Wizard. Um, I've been in the security space for a little over eight years now. I started in Web2. Um, I did that for a long time, uh, you know, working as a security engineer, basically just doing what we'd call audits in the Web3 space, doing that internally at companies like Amazon and Apple. Um, left my, my job at Apple when uh, Brendan and I had the idea to, to build Audit Wizard and it started uh, taking off um, and decided we wanted to do that full time. And really, the the inception of Auto Wizard came when I started um, branching out into Web three as a freelance auditor. You know, I was getting interested in crypto and uh, kind of exploring, uh, you know, different products and, and things on chain, and especially you know DeFi and really got interested in the security aspect of it, having been doing application security for so long. And so I'd just pull up random contracts and read the code, you know, things that I had already aped into and was curious, like, oh, I, you know, chasing 1000% yield or whatever, uh, put my money in there and then let me take a moment to, to think about, uh, you know, how secure is this thing really? And I'd look at the contracts and then I would immediately pull my money out because it was not secure at all. Um, so I kind of followed that trend, and then I decided that I, I wanted to, to dive into to Web3 auditing. However, coming from like a more mature Web2 background where there's you know a lot of tools and a lot of like predefined uh, like methods of operation for for doing audits, I felt like the space was was pretty lacking, and I really wanted more like of a support system, more of a structure where I could take my work and automate more of it. Um, you know, reuse things like if I'm building a report, I, I want to be able to just plug in my findings from another project and, and not have to do a whole lot of work. But I found myself like writing new reports from the ground up with, with every audit um, and nothing was super efficient. So I decided I couldn't, I couldn't do freelance auditing until these problems were solved. Met Brendan around that time and, you know, shared these pain points and we decided we needed to make a tool out of it. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, maybe Brendan also can share your, the the background and the, you know the stuff about yourself. Yeah, for sure. So on my side, um, you know, my name's Brendan, other co-founder of Auto Wizard. I've been working in the Web three space since like early twenty twenty, doing like DevRel and operations. I got my start in DeFi, um, working on a protocol to build index funds on chain, and doing that, I started to learn about what smart contract audits were. You know, and we were paying a lot of money and waiting a lot of time to get them done. Um, and so it seemed pretty obvious to me that that space was inefficient, um, you know, especially in the last bull run. Um, and so since then, I've worked at Filecoin. Um, and about two years ago, I met Joe at East Denver, where he told me about his ideas for building a tool to make the auditing process more efficient. You know, as he shared, he was kind of a solo auditor at that time. And I thought it was super interesting. Um, so yeah, just kind of every day after work since then, we hacked it together. Um, and now here we are with Auto Wizard. Cool. Um, yeah, just I cannot uh, wait for uh, see your the demo of the product. So maybe we can drop on it like right now, and just you know you can explain all details and how it works. Sure. Yeah, we can. Um, 
go ahead and get a demo going here. Um, there we go. Stream. All right, so this is what um, Auto Wizard looks like when you first open it. So to start, um, I definitely want to dig into a lot of the concepts and you know ethos around why we built Audit Wizard and, and how we approach building it. But we can kind of go through the product itself for a little bit first. Um, so when you first open it, you have your list of projects here. And you have different ways you can import things. So we have a few contests, like Code Arena contest, Sherlock, uh, Code Hawks, some Cantina ones sometimes. Um, other bounties, like Hats Finance, has a lot of bounties that you can import and um, could pull things directly from GitHub as well. So, uh, oh, and you can also just paste in a, a Git repository or a smart contract address and select the chain that you want to import the code from. So to start, I'm just going to take this GitHub repo and go ahead and import it. And so you can think of AutoWizard like an uh, uh, online IDE, right? Um, you know, as I said, I spent around eight years doing security audits for Web2 companies. And then coming into the Web3 space, there was a lot that I felt was missing. However, when I, it, you know, in Web2 as well, I always felt like there was a little bit of clunkiness because auditors are using, uh, they're using developer tools to do auditing work. Uh, and, and a lot of the flow and a lot of the support tools and the quality of life stuff doesn't apply as much to auditors. Um, as it does to devs. So I, I never really liked using dev tools to do my work. So we've kind of built Audit Wizard with that in mind. It's an auditor first IDE. Um, so why don't we just kind of look through here what we've got. So first of all, each of these contracts has like different imports, right? Opens up and stuff, um, you know, that it pulls from, from NPM or from like from GitHub. So what Auto Wizard does is it will automatically detect those and it will kind of pull in those um, dependencies. So you can you can go and look at your dependencies that you're actually using, um, look through the, the libraries and see how they work if you're curious. But that's a necessary step for uh, being able to compile the project anyway. Um, which we'll get to in, in a bit, how the different tools uh, kind of leverage that. But to start, you know, you can look through the code. Um, you know, the first step in any audit is just understanding the code. And maybe you want to annotate it, right, as you kind of understand things. So what you can do is you can actually um, create a couple notes. So you can just... If I want to highlight this wallet of owner function and make a note about it, um, and just maybe comment on, you know, some comment about how this function works, um, and then I have the location here, and I'll make, I'll say this is uh, just informational for myself. Let me add a note there. So now I can see I, I've sort of annotated the code. I have my note here. Um, it covers this stuff. I can see it in my in my notes here as well. Or if I just wanted to create like a, a bookmark, um, like let's say right here, make a little bookmark note. Say maybe this is a potential issue. Um, only owner might have an issue. Okay. So. Now I've just made a really quick note where I can sort of come back to it. I can navigate through the code, but point is I've um, I've read through everything and I can you know organize myself and write some notes on the code. Now I think how people would would normally do this is they'll edit the file and they'll add comments and they'll maybe use like a plugin to 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 manage this. Um, and we've we've steered away from being able to edit any of the code because I feel like 
as an auditor, you you don't really want to make any changes to the the code you're editing. You don't want to put comments there, and then um, maybe you maybe you forget whose comments what, or you know it, it can just get kind of messy. So we have this system where you actually can't edit this code at all. You know, if I'm, I'm trying to type here, but I but nothing's happening. So it's just kind of read only, but you can annotate and layer things on top of it. So that's it for, for notes. Now, if you've found something, like let's say um, this check in the mint function is uh, has some, some issue. So you can add what's now called a finding. Um, so I'll say um, just proper ownership check. And I'll say this one probably will give it a, will give it a high severity. There's the location of it there, um, and I want to I want to describe this. So now maybe I don't want to spend the time to write out the full description. So I'll just go ahead and I'll use AI to generate the description, and it's going to write a little bit here for me. So basically, I just give it the location of the code. I write a title, and then AI will um, populate this for me. Now, if I didn't want to do that, if I feel like this is a little bit wordy, I could also just um, delete that. I wanted to keep it more simple and say the ownership check um, sent properly, reference sender. I'm just kind of making this up as I go. This could allow an attacker to change the mint amount. So that's something that could be a, a threat. And if I want you know, AI to rewrite or expand on that, I can have it do that as well. Um, and also have it uh, do the same thing for the recommendation. Yeah, so here it took my brief write-up and it kind of uh, expanded it a little bit into something that's a little bit more professional that can be put onto a report. Um, and it says, upon review, it's been identified it, or identified that the implementation flawed. Specifically, the mechanism fails to accurately authenticate the message, message sender's identity. This could potentially be exploited, et cetera, et cetera. Um, could do the same thing, thing for the recommendation, but I'll just leave that for now. So, I've now created a finding here, and um, I can generate a proof of concept test if I want now. So this is something we added recently where um, it, we can use, use AI to actually uh, build a foundry test for us. So we'll just give this a second here, but you can see just from the description, from the title, and from the uh, lines of code I gave it, it g gives us this complete foundry test where it has a, sort of a setup. And then it will test the mint. Um, so this attempts to mint more than the amount. Um, and basically what we had said was the ownership check was incorrect so that you could put in whatever amount you want. So it actually kind of intelligently built the test for us. Now it's not perfect. You'll have to kind of copy this and maybe edit the setup a little bit because, you know, the AI can't uh, get everything right as as far as that goes. So, um, might have to adjust a couple of things. But this should be pretty close, and you should be able to to just run this. Um, so that's kind of the the flow there. And actually, something we're going to be releasing very soon is the ability to run the foundry tests within audit wizard so once you generate a test using this button it will actually go into a uh, a testing tool be added to your list of tests and you can run those individually you can look through the um, the traces you get from foundry you don't have to really do any setup because we automatically pull in imports um, and resolve everything for you all you have to do is just import from GitHub from on-chain, click around, basically do what I what I just did, find a finding, 
write something out, generate your proof of concept, and then boom, you can start testing proof of concepts within just a few minutes. That's the idea. Now, um, that's the basic flow. There's a lot more you can do. One thing we have here is we have this um, whiteboard uh, mechanism. You can you can draw different things. Um, you can uh, let's see if I wanted if I wanted to make a diagram, I could you know just build a diagram and I could start oh, function A and function B, right? And I could it's a very simplistic one, but if I wanted to show how a um, you know attack might work or uh, the different steps I would take, or if I simply just want to sort of graph out how the functions all interact so I can have a better understanding, we have this nice Excaladraw integration um, where you can do that, and then you can have different whiteboards here. Um, yeah, so that's that feature. And now there's a lot you can do with the Solidity code itself to analyze it. First thing is if you care to look through the AST, like if you're building a, um, a scanning tool, we have the ability to, to do that. So you can look through like what actually uh, this kind of compiles down to. Uh, probably more interesting than that, though, is you can generate a graph. So we can see here. This is sort of a simple contract, but you can see the basic contract flow, right? The mint function, if I click on it, this is what it looks like. Or if I click on this function, I can see it calls these two functions here. Um, let's see. Yeah. Maybe we want to open the location here. Yeah. So we can go and look at the, the code there now. So, um, in addition to that, we can, let me open this file, we can scan with different um, static code analysis tools. Right now, Slither is the, the one we have, so I can go ahead and hit the scan button here. So that runs pretty quickly. Um, another thing to mention is uh, we actually include the pessimistic um, Slither end detectors in addition to the base Slither detectors, so you get a little bit extra. Um, so I've run the scan, uh, not really a whole lot found. We can see there's a few medium findings, um, maybe one low here, but there are 47 informational findings. Um, but we can see them highlighted here, and it can actually click uh, over here, and we can see the description. So before, when you when you use Slither, you get this just wall of text. I mean, there's, what, over 50 findings here. And that's everything that Slither would output in your command line to you. And now we're using um, this interactive UI to, to go through, and we can actually see it laid on top of the code, like this send value, if I want to look. Um, says no calls to custom addresses and contract interactions through access control. There's actually a few findings here um, that, that came from Slither, dead code, low level calls, this thing from pessimistic. So it gives you just a, a much better interface for uh, you know navigating Slither, uh, the findings there. All right. And so got a couple other features. Next one to show is the AI feature. So we can analyze the code. Uh, I won't click that button now because it can, can take a little bit of time. Um, but we can chat with an AI and we can ask it some basic questions. So if I just am looking at this file and I want to get an idea of what, what are the uh, state changing functions in the contract, I can, I can ask the AI this. I can ask it anything really. Um, but I just clicked one of the pre-made prompts we have here. And so you can use this uh, chat function to really dig into how a contract works. 
And the nice thing about um, AI that I like is you can have a mix of questions about how is the, the contract doing a certain thing? What are the security implications of different uh, things? Like what, what threats can you think of that I should be looking into? But you can also ask questions like in Solidity, how, uh, what's the difference between uh, external and public, right? Um, or what, what happens when I make the variable on line 40 or whatever, if I make that uh, storage rather than memory? And it'll give you an intelligent response. So you don't have to go open another tab to Google things. Um, and you also have the, the context of the contract you're looking at with the AI. So you can really use it to explore a lot. And it, and it helps when you know this file is over a thousand lines long. Um, and I don't want to read every line. I just want to I just want to assess a couple high level things. And I'll use the AI to dig into that. So I asked it. Um, what functions change the state of the, the contract? And it gave me a list of all the different functions and tells me how it how it changes them. Um, and so I could ask, uh, what are the security concerns with the mint functions? So while AI will not, it's not suitable to find um, vulnerabilities per se. It can do a good job of helping you ideate your threat model, the areas of focus within the code, places you should start with, where you should look. Um, and so I'll use AI to say, basically, I, I, I just opened this project. I don't understand it a whole lot yet. Where do you think I should, I should start? Like, what are some of the first functions I should look at? Um, and what are the security concerns with them? So if I if I think that the mint function, uh, mint, if I think that this mint function is where I really want to put my focus, I can ask it, what are the security concerns, as I did? And it will kind of outline, OK, access control. Uh, let me look at how access control is done. OK, so only owner, that's, that's probably fine, although I might want to go and confirm that um, you know, modifier and how it works. Um, integer overflow might be another one. So let me look at the actual implementation here. And then I would look at it and say, OK, yeah, maybe this could be overflowed. It depends on what Solidity version we're using. Um, but maybe amount is you know, something we can't easily spoof. Yeah. Looks like it looks like it might be spoofable, so that's that's kind of how I would, I would approach, um, you know, looking into a code base using AI to really accelerate uh, my understanding and kind of guiding me in looking at different vulnerabilities. And then if I if I think I found something, uh, you know, again I'll create the finding and I'll use AI to help me write it and help me generate a proof of concept test. Um, and then now. The last thing to show is this inspection tool. This is a, a new one for us, so uh, it has some uh, things we're going to be adding to it. But for right now, we have uh, two aspects to it. We have the storage slots. So when looking at any contract, um, you have a you have a set of um, storage slots that are assigned when it gets deployed, right? And that's where the storage variables are uh, you know, put on chain. And it's pretty useful to look at the layout. Oftentimes, you might see, um, let me see if I can find these variables. Token URI. So oftentimes you um, you might see that someone has like a boolean value, um, and that gets put into a, an entire slot itself. When in fact they could pack their variables by you know reordering them in a certain way, um, or maybe there's a security issue with uh, 
you know, the storage slots being laid out a certain way. Either way, now you can just open the inspection tool and see what the internal layout of the contract storage is. And this other one doesn't really apply to, to this example, but if you import a contract via um, a, a contract address, then uh, Auto Wizard will actually pull in the values for um, all the public variables. So similar to how you would see in like Etherscan, you could you could look up the public variables and you can query them. Um, we have these on-chain values, and they'll actually be layered on the code. So if you if you um, like if I hovered over this, I would see what the value of it is. You know, if I had imported this via via address, but also there'll be a list of them here, so you can see what's the current state of the contract and how are the variables laid out. So that's the final tool, um, and that's really how you can uh, you can use Auto Wizard to to do your audits. Um, and now, I guess the last thing to say is we're still in beta. There are so many more features that we're going to be adding, uh, but I, I think that what we have now for Auto Wizard is still a pretty good value add for um, anyone doing an audit, looking to streamline their process, uh, and we'll be adding so much more that will you know, continue to, to, to reach that goal. Okay, cool. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, just the first question for myself is that, what do you think about uh, quality of AI generated uh, information in the tool? Like how we can uh, uh, verify the, the quality of the, of the information though? Yeah. It, or it can be, you know, what what you use? You use chat, uh, you use uh, the OpenAI models, right? Like integrate them. Yeah, basically, it's a, a GTP four model. Okay. Um, so yeah, what do you I, think? Yeah, yeah. Explain. Sorry. Yeah. It. So it 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 really varies. So, I mean, th these are generalized LLMs, and they're suitable for generalized tasks. And this is a very specific task of using it for um, you know, uh, text generation, code generation, and to, to query about the context of uh, you know, the code you're looking at, or, or, or to have it analyze or, or, or break down the, the concepts within the code. And so LLMs are, are good for handling language-based uh, tasks. So that's kind of what we've, we've focused on. Right, so the the first one I demonstrated was the ability to rewrite the notes. You know, it, anytime you interact with, you know, ChatGPT, it it can give you a little bit of a, cl a clunky response, and that's definitely still the case. Um, so there's there's always some editing you're going to want to do. Um, and the same thing with like generating code, right? Like anyone who's used like GitHub Copilot, it's really great for establishing boilerplate code, but when you have something kind of novel, um, there's a little bit more hand-holding you need to do, and you need to be more specific about what you're asking from the AI uh, to get the result you want, and then also probably do some editing afterwards to make sure it will compile and that it actually does what you are looking for. So th that's still the case. Um, so that's why we really focus on AI to be this um, augmentation rather than this automation so you use ai to seed the work you're already going to do as like a shortcut to get the boilerplate out of the way um but you you notice that at, at no point did we use ai to find a vulnerability or make any claims to the actual security of the project and that's because you know in our research um and the uh uh you know what we've what we've seen playing around with it is ai is not really suitable to find, you know, concretely find if a um, vulnerability is present or not. I think it takes a huge quantity of data and very specific engineering uh, that goes well beyond an LLM to find things like this. And so our approach to AI is breaking down how we want to use AI into these very specific smaller tasks like helping you throughout model and helping you understand and right now we have the auditor be sort of the driver of coordinating all those things together 
maybe in the future AI can it, it can be more cohesive where you give it a, a, a larger task of you know uh, start the audit and and basically do the work of what a junior auditor might um, but I think we're pretty far from that that future and it takes a lot of context and it takes a lot of training uh, but to start it's a good it's a good tool for just shortcutting uh, boilerplate. Yeah, um, well, that, that's actually true what you say. I'm wondering, like, can you speak about the, um, the prompts that you use for like, for generating the description and for rewriting? I'm really curious. I'm wondering uh, how, yeah, how is it? Yeah, um, it's not a super complicated prompt. It's something along the lines of, you know, uh, you're a, an expert auditor and make sure you are considering these things when you answer and make sure you're not getting distracted and being too long-winded in, in these areas. I, I think for for prompt engineering in general, you just you start with the basics, you see what your output is, and you can see, oh, it's, it's like it won't shut up about uh, gas optimizations or something, even though they're like pretty a uh, pretty low chance to actually be there. So maybe I'll put in something that says, focus a little bit less on gas. Um, so the core of it is just, hey, you're an expert um, Solidity auditor. And then we have a little bit of things to tune the response to make it a little bit more user friendly. But that's it really. And, and, and then we give it the context of the file you have open in Audit Wizard. Um, and uh, uh, I didn't, so I showed the chat function. I didn't show the analyze function, which basically, well, it's because it writes a whole wall of text. But uh, for that prompt, it's basically just give us a, an analysis of the security of the smart contract. Um, and again, I'll we'll put some like additional statements there, like focus more on these aspects and shy away from these other aspects. Um, you know, that's... That's really it, uh, but it's just a it's a basic you know GPT LLM. But the the best part is that it has the context of the entire file, right? You can ask it any question about lines of code, um, or just general questions, and it it will act as if it is a, a expert security auditor. And we found that that works decently well. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's uh, I like the the. The fact that we can, let's say, communicate with uh, AI on the, um, like, while we are reviewing, it's actually pretty useful because actually, well, I'm a user myself of Audio Wizard, and uh, sometimes I have some potential client that wants to have some code. Uh, the way I use it is I, I want to quickly know what it is about and what it's there, and it is very nice to, to just go to to the first option that it's uh, I, I think it says something about the explain the 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 contract or the project and it gives you a very nice mm -hmm. overview so actually I'm I was curious about the the prompts because it's uh, accurate not only for the raising uh, bugs or issues or, or findings but in general it's it's useful definitely I mean we all know we can just go also to, to chat GPT or whatever, but it's nice to have it there as well. Yeah, um, I think something about having it embedded is just such a quality of life boost because w when you think about it, if you want to use chat GPT, you're going to have to prompt engineer it any, every time. So you open up chat GPT and you say, okay, here are my instructions. Like pretend you're, you know, you the AI are, um, an expert auditor, uh, maybe here's some resources or like some additional training data to get you there. Follow these rules. Um, and then here's my contract that I'm referencing. Okay, so I spent all that time putting all that in there. And then now let me chat with you about different things. Um, so it's just really avoiding that overhead and just, you just click one button and you start interacting with it right away. Um, that, that has a lot of value. And then also, at every step that you're um, working in an auto wizard, there's some sort of integration with AI, you know, rewriting something or generating a test for you. 
Um, it's pretty prolific what you can do with it. Yeah, totally. And by the way, I actually was uh, very happy to see that bar as POC. <laughs> it was quickly generated, and I understand what you say that it's um, kind of pre-generated that you like some some uh, obviously not definite definite uh, code that you can just use and it will work properly. But uh, yeah, I, I didn't notice that feature yet, so that's that's interesting. And yeah, I'm, I was curious, like, uh, is it, uh, like you say that it's, uh, what was it that, um, like, are you using, you're using Foundry for, for those POCs? Yeah. So, um, this is a feature we're going to be releasing in, um, sometime this month, but essentially we are creating a Foundry integration with Audit Wizard to run Foundry tests on our servers. So essentially what you get is um, this nice tool view where it has a list of all the tests that currently exist in the project. So if you load up a project that a developer made from GitHub or something and it has all their, their tests in there, um, you can run those uh, just to you know confirm that they work. Uh, but you can also build your own tests, your own proof of concept tests, and you can run them using our Foundry backend. And it will give you the response, whether it passed or failed, and it will give you the trace, and you can look through that. And similar to Slither, Foundry has this problem where, it, you know, if you get really verbose with it, you're you're blasted with this wall of text in um, your command line. Um, and that can be that can be a little bit difficult to work with so we're we provide kind of a nice ui wrapper around that where you can navigate the trace and you know all these things are collapsed until you want to dig into them um and you have like this interactive view so it's much easier to actually look at the traces like if you want to look at the trace of an individual test and dig into that it's a lot easier to do that than scroll through this wall of text and try to decipher it um so that's what's coming uh, and there's definitely more similar things on the roadmap. Like we want to add um, chisel, a chisel integration as well, um, so that you can just have a REPL in Audit Wizard, and you can just throw in some Solidity, uh, Solidity code, and and you know see what happens. You know, I think a lot of people when they looking at like complex math, they want to just quickly run through it and be like, well, what if what if I try to overflow or divide by this number? Like, how is Solidity actually going to handle that? Um, so that's another thing we're going to be adding, so you can sort of explore those things in the future. Okay, um, that's that's cool, definitely. And you you showed Slither, and then you for a moment you showed that there is slithering from pessimistic. I, I actually am. Well, not, I was about to say I'm far from being an expert, but I'm barely getting acquainted with it like two days ago. And that's mutation testing. So it's a whole new well, experience there and a whole new level. Uh, I was reading a bit about it and it seems, uh, well, very, very pot like powerful thing, powerful tools. So are you using, like, how are you actually creating the... How are they called the the well mutations or I don't remember. Like are you introducing in the code the the errors and then testing if if the available tests in the framework are actually found? You mean for like testing the effectiveness of Slytherin or just for the general use case of running it? Yeah, the general use case. Like uh, if I'm not mistaken, mutation testing is adding some bugs. And then runs your available tests so to see if those bugs are found or not. And I'm wondering if there is a kind of report or anything that says anything about it in in audit wizard. Right. Um, so we don't we don't necessarily do anything special. We uh, like the way the way Slither works is. Um, you have the core like Slither engine, and you compile your contracts 
um, you know, anyone who's used Slither knows you, you can just like point it at a contract and, and what it will do is it first compiles that and then it will check all these different things. And the way that works is the Slither engine will run um, against that compiled code, put it in an intermediary state, and then you have a suite of detectors. And it will run through each of those detectors and see if they kind of match to that intermediary state. And then that's when you get the findings, if one of them has matched. Um, and so Trail of Bits in, in Slither has a, a default set of detectors, and Pessimistic has made their own um, that does that, you know, I guess, mutation testing. I, I haven't looked too, too deeply into it, but um, all we do is we take those detectors and we add it into the uh, the suite of detectors that we're running through Slither. And and to do that, normally, you have to go to the Slither in, like GitHub. You have to download their detectors. You have to install it into Slither. And I think now they have like some scripts uh, where you can run it on its own if you just want to look at the individual detectors individually. Um, and there's some problems, like if one detector has a an error in it, then the whole scan will fail. Um, and AutoWizard handles those like gracefully. We we run the detectors individually and catch the errors. Um, so it, it's just like an easier way to add additional detectors to your Slither scans. And now we're going to be, uh, you know, we're planning to add more in the future. And it, as we find more like people building these uh, additional Slither detectors, we can easily add them in. Maybe the future of Auto Wizard actually would be a platform where um, you as a user can write a simple Slither detector yourself. Like if you find a vulnerability um, and you want to kind of automate that so that every time you're reviewing something, you can just you know run through Slither and it will it will um, find your your detector if it's there. Maybe the future in, in Auto Wizard is going to be that functionality where, you know, you, you can do that. So maybe it will be somehow moving into, well, online ID that is read mode only, but uh, potentially saying that uh, we might be, or you might be adding JSL there, and that you also mentioned that potentially you can write your own tests. So it seems that it's going to get maybe soon mm, not more like uh, because I, yeah, I wanted to ask earlier actually because you say you will be able to add your own tests so that means that then mm -hmm. you will be able to edit the existing contract that you imported or where well, will those tests be written in a separate uh, I don't know yeah, it's kind of. I, I wish I could demo it now, okay. um, but it, you know, it'll, it'll be released soon. But it's it's kind of a um, it's kind of a separate little tool where you get a new window and you get a fresh um, like file and you can edit it. You write your test in there and you save it, and it kind of saves to this other. It's kind of outside of the project, right? So we we feel pretty strongly about keeping the data and the work you do separated from the core project so you always know you haven't touched the core project um you've you've like can write some tests but they're kind of in this special area um and, and so you can no yeah you can write yeah. tests we have a, a great excuse to to meet again so that you can demo that yeah, yeah, and, and keep an eye out like on our Twitter. We're going to be releasing it very soon, and and definitely super excited about that feature. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Maybe uh, someone have question. I think Gregory have one. Yeah. Just let me give him a. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey guys, can you hear me now? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I just got a community the question from the community member who couldn't join today. Uh, but yeah, he really wanted to, to get an answer, answer, answer for that. So the question is, uh, in the following, as far as I understood, you have the functionality in the, in your application to generate the reports, right? So you can submit the vulnerability, uh, and generate the report from that. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. So the question was, uh, is there any like 
security practices integrated uh, to, to keep the disclosed vulnerabilities uh, in private and defend it in any way. Uh, yeah, because uh, that was his kind of point of, uh, how do you call it, like anxiety at some point, mm -hmm. just because, uh, yeah, just because if you disclose critical uh, within the application that is does not have like direct, um, how do you call it? like relations to the judging the vulnerability and actually uh, providing uh, the this whole concept. I wonder what do you think on this question, if, if you have any anything to, to tell. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's 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 a great question. And it's uh, something that's been the, at the top of our mind for a while. Um, so first off, I'll say that, uh, you know, we we've built audit wizard with security in, in mind from from day one and the features we build in we, we make sure they're secure we get uh you know we, we've had a, a penetration test performed and we make sure that uh everything's fully mitigated and there's no significant security threats so the standard like web app security stuff that's handled you know we encrypt everything in the database um you know, like the the standard data handling s security measures. So you should feel comfortable with the security level of, of Auto Wizard. And now, if you're doing something highly critical and you want to keep a finding entirely to yourself, uh, I mean, we as Auto Wizard are not decrypting the database and looking through the data. Uh, you know, there's no human putting eyes on the your unencrypted data. Um, I guess theoretically, it's possible that we could, since the database and the key exist in the same place. And if if you're extra paranoid about uh, a specific finding you found or a, a project that you're working on, we actually re released um, a recent feature where you can open a project in what's called private mode. And now, I walked through a couple a, a couple things you can do in Audit Wizard. You can create notes, you can create findings, and you can draw on the whiteboard to create diagrams. And when you open something in private mode, what happens is a key is generated within your browser that only you know about. It only exists in your browser. So Auto Wizard doesn't have access to it. No other third party has access to it. And that key is used to encrypt the findings, notes, and whiteboards from your browser before it even gets sent to our servers. So if you're extra paranoid, that's full end encryption, um, and there's no way anyone, including Auto Wizard, could look at that data. So even if um, an attacker, you know, breached Auto Wizard completely, stole all of our data, they would still not be able to access. Um, you know that that data that's encrypted with your key, and so then you there is a little bit of nuance to that. It does disable some of the features, like the AI features. Obviously, are not going to work on encrypted data. Um, we're working on improving our report generation system. Right now, it happens server side, and there's actually a lot of like UX and UI improvements that need to be made there anyway. But we're going to be moving that to the client side so that when you have these end-to-end -end encrypted findings, you can still generate a report from them. So that's going to be coming. But the, the privacy mode exists now. Um, and uh, I guess the only other thing there is when you enable that, you do have to be a little bit careful about managing your key. Uh, because if you do work and you you know clear your browser cache, for example, that's going to blow away the key. So you should make sure to always export the key uh, when you're, uh, you know, opening a project in private mode. And then when you, if you want to go to another browser or another machine to access the same, uh, you know, private project you are working on, you need to somehow copy that key over to that machine and then provide it in your browser when you try to open that. Um, so there's a little bit of key management involved, but it does give you complete privacy if you, uh, if you care about that. Yeah, that, that's awesome. That sounds awesome to me. Like, yeah, I, I didn't didn't expect that uh, comprehensive answer, but you clear, I guess, the clear the the mind for a lot of auditors who or who got stopped by using your application just because they don't know that you have this functionality. But yeah, the idea was actually like from from my side, I thought that 
the cool idea would be to to do some kind of uh, desktop application or something like that does not have any connection to the internet. But here the trade off is that you cannot use the LLM, right? And I, I think the yeah. your solution your solution is the best one here. Sounds good. Yep. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, and, and I, I think. People have asked about a desktop version uh, because there are some people that are extra paranoid and want to do their work on an air-gapped machine. Um, and that's something we're exploring for the future. I, I can't say it's coming anytime soon because it's quite a big lift. Right. Uh, but I do think it's it's a possibility that there could be uh, like a containerized version of our app, basically compress our servers down to an executable and uh, people can download it as that, that as a desktop client. So that might be something we... Uh, look for in the future. So if anyone cares strongly about that, please let us know, and that will, um, you know, inform if we need to reprioritize that. Awesome. Yeah, um, really inspired by you guys, to be honest, because you are shipping. I, I think you're one of the uh, the quickest teams to ship products, uh, and I think that that's your motto. Uh, I I I got I got it from our conversation on uh, in Paris last uh, last year, this year actually, this summer. So yeah, um, congrats on that. Uh, I hope you have more tools, more features uh, released soon. I wonder if anyone has more questions in the community from the community site. Uh, let me know. Uh, just I think the chat. yeah. I think the the question is how how the independent security researchers can start uh, using your tool. Do you have you know open beta or you have closed one? How they can you know the the try to use it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so we're in an open beta right now. So that demo I gave is the experience everyone would have um, when they when they visit the tool. So you can you can go there now. You can import via any mechanism. Um, you know, we made it easy by putting some of the popular contests out there, which I'm sure people are most interested in diving into. Uh, but yeah, I'd say to get started, just go create an account. Um, you can log in via Google, GitHub, you can use your Ethereum wallet to do sign in with Ethereum, to sign a, a message. So there's a lot of different ways to create an account. Um, and yeah, then you can just do exactly what I did and, and, and get started using all the powerful features. And now in for, for now, it's free and, uh, because we're in beta and we're looking to get user feedback. So please feel free to reach out to us with that feedback. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate it and, and definitely give Give everything a try and, and uh, you know use it for your work. Now, we'll be releasing, uh, you know, coming out of beta and releasing like a full production version, uh, sometime next spring, so next year, uh, and then that will have even more powerful features with uh, you know like a, a paid subscription plan where if you want more than what there is now, um, which will have built many more things, um, then you can you can pay a little bit extra get you know, reduce rate limits, get maybe better AI uh, responses and, and have access to those unique features that we're going to be bringing. So that's the future. But right now it's free for everyone for the next few months. So please uh, give it a try and enjoy it. Yeah, maybe um, I just can read the, the question from the chat also from HMHA. Uh, the person asked, is it like a DAS only solidity uh, audit? Uh, I mean, uh, is it integrated only with Solidity, or you can audit others, you know, languages? Yeah. So um, that first part of the demo that I showed, where you like you take you you import the project and you take notes on the code and you create findings, um, all of that is sort of agnostic of the language. So you can actually use AutoWizard to do any security work, like any auditing work you want on any language, any ecosystem, um, as long as you can import it into AutoWizard. Uh, but then the other tools that I showed you where you can you know, generate a graph, you can scan with Slither, um, you can look at the storage slots, those are kind of Solidity specific. Uh, and right now we're really just focusing on Solidity EVM tooling. It'll take a while to get all the tools that we want fully integrated. Um, there's a there's a very long list of them. I would say at this point we're 20 to 25 percent feature complete uh, with just the Solidity roadmap. So we do have in mind to support other languages. I think especially we're looking at um, you know Arbitrum Stylus and and how they have the different Wasm 
uh, compatible languages and thinking about how we can provide a mechanism to allow people to do like security scanning of, you know, these new like like Rust and and these new languages. So things like Solana and and Arbitrum Wasm uh, contracts, you know, you can do the, the same work on them. But no uh, no concrete release date for that yet. I would say just stay tuned and um, eventually we'll get around to supporting your you know preferred language. Any mm, coming uh, features that you can speak about? Like we know about the testing one, potentially integrating with Stylus or Rust. Anything else that you guys have in mind that is actually going to happen, but just in next year? Yeah. Um, I'd say testing is the, is the the most exciting one, and there's some there's some additional features on top of that that I didn't talk about. Um, we're going to be building this template system, so you can think of it's kind of like Solo did, but if it was just for proof of concept tests. Um, so if you had like a big large library of tests, you could browse through, like if you want to test for reentrancy or you want to test. An ERC20 contract. You want to just load up all the different ERC20 standard security tests and, and run them against this contract. You can do that. You can create your own templates and you can share them um, amongst yourself, uh, um, amongst your community. Um, and also, so that's that's going to be coming with testing or shortly after. And also, um, we, as a team, uh, I think a, about a month or so ago, maybe a couple months ago, participated in a hackathon. It, uh, ETH Global New York, and what we built there, what we call it Spyglass. Um, so if you're interested, I think you could find the, the tweet on our Twitter that, that talks about it, and we have a little demo video. But essentially what Spyglass is, is it's a platform for allowing you to create, to easily and intuitively create a detection rule. So I talked about before, like you can extend Slither as pessimistic has done with Slytherin, you can extend it by writing a detector, but that requires you learn the ins and outs of Slither, you write it in Python, um, you understand how Slither is going to work, and you, there's like a steep learning curve, and then you create a whole GitHub repo and fork the part of Slither you need, and it's just a huge pain if you want to quickly throw together a detector. So what Spyglass does is it abstracts all of that, so you can use um, Slither, you can use AST, um, Traversal, you can use regex pattern matching, and you can use AI, and you can combine all those things together and say, like, um, maybe ask the AI, hey, does this contract conform to uh, ERC-20 standard? If yes, then let me uh, run this detector in Slither, and let me also do some regex pattern matching, and if enough of those things are, are are matching, then I'll say, oh, this is this looks like reentrancy. And so now there's two benefits to that. One, um, the community can build these rules and they can be agnostic of the language because you can use AI and you can just um, look at larger patterns, but also build these rules out for individual languages, like for um, for tra traversing through the AST, maybe the Python AST looks a little bit different than um, uh, Solidity, or, or uh, the Rust AST looks a little bit different from Solidity. You just make some small tweaks, but the point is it's really easy to do and to be applied to different languages and different systems. So then we can start supporting like these Wasm languages and Rust and and you know different things that aren't Solidity with scanning tools that you know the community can make within Audit Wizard. But also, it it supports this. What I firmly believe is is the future of auditing. It supports this um, automation and augmentation part of the auditing process, where you find some things, uh, and you found them by looking at a certain pattern, and you think that pattern is easily, you know, a machine could easily find that. So you want to write a quick like script to find that. This gives you a mechanism to do that. So now in the future, you don't have to really look for that anymore. You've got this reproducible scanner that you can you can easily build within a matter of minutes or even use AI to help you write those rules. Um, and 
every time you do an audit, if you add one or two, eventually you get this large suite of scanning rules where you open up a project and maybe it finds a couple of vulnerabilities that you would have found yourself you know, right away. So you can write your own slither, essentially. Um, so that's something we're excited about that will be coming next year. It really sounds interesting. I mean, it's some kind of that now in ChatGPT, you can create different type of ChatGPTs, right? Like you can have some expert in Foundry, some expert in something, and then he has some some knowledge base, right? And I, I was thinking now on the way, like a suggestion of a new feature, or maybe you, you have thought of that. So considering that there are people that either private audits or in public contests, they collaborate with each other. Any kind of shared mode coming? Anything that can be, uh, yeah, two people working the same import, let's say. Yeah, that's that's a really good, uh, really good question. That is actually coming. Um, hopefully for that production launch that I mentioned next spring. Nice. Um, the idea is to to have cool. something similar to uh, like the experience you get in Cantina Code, right? You can annotate comment on the code and have like a conversation between the different participants, right? Maybe you maybe you want to invite so if you're doing a contracted audit, maybe you want to invite to the um, the audit wizard project the owner of the contracts so that you're auditing and they can see your progress. They can see the things you're doing and you can also have a back and forth chat with them. Um, if you have a question like, how does this thing work? Or what do you think about this potential finding? Or if you find something right away, you want to let them know about it. You say, hey, open up Audit Wizard. You can see my you know, my report as I'm writing it before I deliver it. Um, but also, if you are working on a team of auditors, um, you know, in addition to that, you can, and we don't know exactly how this is going to work yet because we haven't started implementing it. But my hope is that we can build like a pair programming um, interface. I think some IDs have this already, um, where it's like a code together plugin, um, where you can both be editing the same stuff. Um, so we want to bring something like that to Audit Wizard, where you can see what the other person, what files they're looking at. If they highlight a chunk of code, they want to bring your attention to. Um, there's a you know mechanism for that. So the idea would be you guys are on like a Discord call or something. You're talking to each other and like looking at the same project in Audit Wizard, and you can see each other working, or you can work asynchronously, and you can see here's the updates you know your fellow auditor made, or the notes they left for you that you need to go act on. Um, and in addition to that, if you have like a junior auditor and a senior auditor, you could have someone do the audit work, and you have like a review cycle where okay, um, similar to GitHub, they pushed a a, a, you know, a PR, if you want to think of it that way, to the security report you guys are working on, and it just needs a review from the senior auditor uh, to OK it and say, yeah, th these are all good. I agree, I agree with them. So hopefully we can put all that in, um, and we'll see how that looks when we get there. That, that yeah, sounds that's... awesome. Yeah. I, I, I just want to add one thing. Sorry, guys, to interrupt. Yeah, just the idea of making a collaboration platform for auditing. I think this is something like, that would be a game changer, to be honest. Make it really secure and make it, uh, yeah, I will shill for sure once you do it. <laughs> I will be the, the number one shiller because you read my mind with this yeah. idea. I think that that's a super cool topic. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the, the live session is coming to the end and I wanna just to say thank you for all our participants, to our co-hosts, to our speakers from Audit Wizard. As you, uh, as they said, you can drop and try their tool for free. It's open. It's easy to use. You can, you know, try to do it from day one. And uh, yeah, just thank you guys for your time. Thank you guys for your presentation. And we'll see each other soon. Thank you.